Hi guys, so let's take a look at uh, real wage unemployment. Now, just to remind ourselves, this uh, occurs when real wages are too high, causing an excess supply of workers uh, to be uh, prepared to actually work in the market, in the labour market. Um, now, I've just drawn out a, a very simple demand and supply diagram representing the labour market. How do we know it's representing the labour market? Well, we've got wage on the y-axis, we've got employment on our x-axis okay um so uh, yeah nice and straightforward our demand line is the actual demand of businesses uh for workers for employees uh, and this is derived demand because of course this is derived from the consumer's demand for the actual product and then in turn the businesses demand workers to provide that product or service. Uh, okay, we can also see the supply of uh, workers which in effect w uh, represents their actual reservation wages, the minimum wage that they are prepared to actually get out of bed or work for uh, at these in these prevailing conditions. Okay, we can see that we attain a market clearing equilibrium at W star E star and this would maximise societal surplus, okay? Uh, so there would be no deadweight economic loss. Every uh, worker that actually wants to work at the given wage rate can actually find a job, okay? Uh, meanwhile, when it comes to the actual demand, every business that actually wants to uh, employ workers at the given wage can do so, okay? So society surplus is maximised. Uh, okay, so if new higher national minimum wage is introduced or a higher living wage, then uh, the impact of that would be to, of course, force wages up beyond the uh, equilibrium level. And it must do that for it to have any sort of effect or influence on the marketplace. Okay, so we can see that represented on the red line there. Now, what this in effect then does is it means that the supply curve really kinks instead of having this bit this bit is irrelevant because now businesses can actually not actually hire workers at these low low rates they have to hire them uh, corresponding with WLW there okay so that in effect is on new supply curve it would also reflect the actual marginal cost of employing each of those additional workers as well uh, okay now what we can also see is that this um, labour supply curve in effect would cross with the demand curve uh, around about that red uh, dot that I've just drawn in there and I'm just going to put that down as ED. That is the employment demanded in the labour market right now. Meanwhile, we can see that a great deal of no, uh, a great deal of workers are actually attractive, attracted and incentivized to actually participate in this labor market now. And so as a direct consequence of that, we can see that the actual participation rate will rise uh, okay, to ES. And the participation rate refers to those who are employed or are actively seeking work. Okay, so we can see that actually, when it comes to uh, the participation rate, that would rise from E star to E S. Okay, so uh, let's just make a note of that here. So it would rise from E star right through uh, to E S. Okay, so we can see that clearly. Um, so that is a rise in the participation rate. Okay, uh, fine. Now, meanwhile, what's also uh, really, really interesting about this is the fact that the level of employment in the industry, um, and if we have our origin there, then we can highlight this really nicely. Um, the employment has actually gone from what would have been zero E star, uh, okay, so from zero right through to E star, that quantity of workers employed, uh, it has now fallen to zero ED, okay? So there is therefore a fall in the level of employment within this marketplace, um, okay? And it's reduced by the difference between E start and ED. Okay, um, so yes, employment falls. But for those people that remain in work, zero to ED, well, they're doing much, much better because they're actual, uh, earning, actually earning more money than they previously were at W Star. So for some, it works out very nicely. But for those workers between E Star and ED, 
um, this uh, living wage does have a rather nasty impact there okay um, then we've got the, the impact on unemployment as a whole and we can see that unemployment previously the market cleared and there was no unemployment but now unemployment runs from ED right through to ES so we can see that again right there uh, okay so the fact that it causes these different dynamics makes this uh, area of economics when it comes to living wages national minimum wages and trade unions really fascinating one to actually explore uh, and analytically you can see there's a lot you can include in here the impact of this as well will of course depend upon how uh, high above the equilibrium that this is actually set. Further to that, it will also depend upon the corresponding elasticities of demand and supply. Um, so for instance, well, you can see that if labor demand is uh, far more inelastic, it has a very different effect, okay? Uh, all right, so uh, this is something that you'll look at in a lot more detail when it comes to labor economics, uh, but we can see that overall we get a big rise in unemployment which could also be represented by uh, this difference here because it's exactly the same difference of course um, okay all right I hope that helps uh, there guys all right